Good evening. It's just about to rain here in New York City, so no motorcycling out tonight. Uh, there was a time I would ride in the rain. Not anymore. Those days are gone. So, somebody asked me, why is u nu equal 4 pi over c i nu? Let's answer that. Actually, I'm going to, there's, strictly speaking, to go through this my way, I would have to, it would be a very long derivation because really intensity is the magnitude of the pointing vector, all right? I don't want to get into that. I'm just looking at this from the radiometer's point of view, the way they do it, because this, these last few topics involving Planck radiation uh, involved a lot of radiometry, okay? That's, that's a long story, it's a subject in itself, and I wanted to do these lectures with the point of view of towards going into the quantum theory and, you know, where all this, the, the knowledge of the nature of light and uh, transitions and black body radiation led, led into the quantum theory. Radiometry is a separate idea. Not entirely separate, but it's a, it's a body of knowledge unto itself. So, why is this the case? First of all, what is you new? It's the energy per unit volume. Joules per cubic meter. But U nu also has a spectral dependence. And that's the complication. Now what is I nu? Well, I nu <coughs> also has a spectral <coughs> com complication. Now, I knew is intensity, but it's spectral. What does that mean? Well, basically, it has a spectral dependence. When we talk about I in physics, as being power per square meter, power per unit area. Okay, that's the kind of intensity people talk about when they use this equation, and E equals one for a black body. One for a black body. All right, this intensity is more like this. You integrate all over all series of frequencies. Now in the case of a black body, the graph kind of could look like this at a particular temperature. And of course we could have new replaced by lambda. C equals F times lambda. Oh, I'm using, uh, and now I'm getting my notation mixed up. I should use nu for frequency. Now, in uh, radiometry, we take these objects to be positive. take uh, the absolute value when we're working out the relationship, the rate, you know, the relationship between nu versus lambda.
I'm going to get something like that, okay? <clears throat> now that's uh, in the notes somewhere, but I only want to work out this relationship here right now, uh, and I'm sidetracking. Um, okay. Okay, well, we begin with this relationship. Now, this is not clearly defined in radiometry. Yes, I did. Okay, so that's the definition of uh, I knew in this sense, but I never quite figured out this one. This is where the radiometers go. They then say, okay, <clears throat> radiation is incident on a surface. We have an enclosed volume that's a dB of radiation and therefore we can define an energy density within that. Of course it could be incident on a surface and that's a separate idea. This would be uh, dA cos theta or something. So let's think. So within this volume Let's see, how do we get that? From this here, we get that. So on and so forth. Now we want to integrate, for the case of a black body, this is going to be 4 pi because it's isotropic radiation. And this, the volume, I guess we can divide it out. <clears throat> basically the energy density. So that the whole thing when integrated out gives me the required relationship. Now, it doesn't look very rigorous. The rigorous way to do it is to approach it through the uh, pointing vector. Uh, but it's still on a messy story. Just the radiometers do this. The problem I have with this is that this object is not very clearly defined. Is it a variation with all these things here? It's not, it doesn't look mathematically defined well to me, but it, it seems to work out OK. We're going to leave that for now and move on, because I've been at this topic for too long. <clears throat> Thank you.